So the first thing that we're going to need to do is load the libraries and then load the train and test set. And as we can see, we have these following features. And the text feature is the one that is important to us. We're going to remove the URLs and emojis and the punctuation. And now we're going to use uh, a Lambda function to basically remove all of these. Let's remove the stop words as well. And now we have a clean data set. If you want to look at a more detailed explanation on these functions, I have another video that I'm going to put a link down in the description to, and you can go ahead and check that one out. Okay. But now let's go ahead and see the text feature. These are the, the cleaned sentences. These reason earthquake may Allah forgive us. This is basically our first text. As you can see, it's clean. It has no punctuation. It has no uh, emojis whatsoever or any stop words as well. So it's a proper cleaned text specifically for this, for, for this problem. Now what we need to do is go ahead and actually start preparing the data. The first thing that we're going to do is actually create a mapping in the form of a counter where we're going to count the occurrences of each word in our corpus. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to import uh, the counter from collections. So basically we're going to count the unique words from, from, from our corpus. So this is what our counter uh, word method does. So basically for each sentence in our text feature, it counts uh, the number of words in that specific uh, in, in that specific sentence let's apply it and see how many words do we get so we have 17971 words and now let's look at the actual object and we can see it's a counter object and we can see that deeds appears twice earthquake appears 50 times forgive appears two times and so on and so forth. California appears 117 times. Okay. And we're going to define a maximum number of words in a specific sequence. And this is going to be super important for us because we need to define a maximum sequence length that we can set to an uh, arbitrary number. Now, depending on the text, it's better to set it higher. For example, for tweets, you can set it like to 50, 70, depending on the maximum length of, of the tweet. But if you have like bigger texts, you can actually set it to 200 or even more. But for the purpose of our um, exercise, we're just going to set it to a lower number, which is 20. Okay. The reason why we need to define the sequence length is because when we use it with TensorFlow, we're going to have to have the, the same sequence length for each, for each sequence. Okay. So we, we won't be able to have sequences of different lengths. We're going to map them to the same sequence size. All right. Now what we can do, we can actually split the, the set into a train test split. So we're going to uh, be using a 20% test set. Therefore, we're going to uh, get the shape of the train and then multiply it by 0 0.8, 0 0.8 and get the integer from that. This is what we're doing now. We're going to set the train sentences to the first elements in the, in the text feature and uh, the test sentences, there will be basically the remaining 20%. So let's go ahead and we do this. So the next thing that we need to do now is use the tokenizer class from Keras to, to tokenize the train sentences. All right. So we're going to import, um, tokenizer, and then we're going to fit it on the texts from the train sentences. And now let's get the word index from, uh, the fitted tokenizer and let's check it out. And if we go ahead and we check this one out, we can see that now we have an index for each word in our, um, in our tokenizer, for example, catastrophe, um, has the word index of 210. Now let's create the sequences from our tokenizer 
based on the indexes from the word index. And if we look at the first sequence from our train set, we can see that it has seven, it has a length of seven, so it has seven words. And what we can do now, we can actually go ahead and we can pad the sequences, as I was telling you earlier, we can pad the sequences to have a specific length because this uh, sequence has only seven words in it, so the length is seven. But we're going to need to map all of our sequences to the same length. So now we can use the pad sequences method from uh, Keras to actually pad the sequences to a specific length. Because when we use an LSTM architecture, we need to have sequences of the same length in order for our model to work. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to first import pad sequences from Keras preprocessing uh, sequence. And then we're gonna pad the sequences to the length that we specified uh, earlier. So now we can check the padded set. And if we check the first item, it's basically an array of, of length uh, 20. And we can see that basically is the same as the train as the first item in the train sequences, just that at the end, it, it added uh, a number of, of zeros so that it has a specific length, okay? And we're going to do the same for the test sequences and we're going to create the test padded so let's print the text uh, let's print let's say the first item in the text and we're going to print also the uh, first item in the sequences so i said that we're going to print the first item so let's go ahead and print the first item so we have this item okay so each word is mapped to a specific number all right and let's let's make, make sure that this actually translates to the first item. Let's go ahead and we're going to use this method to decode it. And if we decode it, we're going to find uh, the first item is this one. So it works. We we can make sure that we we need to make sure that the inverse works as well. So let's print the shape of the train and the shape of the test which is good, so we have 80% for the train and 20% for the test. So this is the model that we are creating. So we're going to use an LSTM architecture and we're going to use an embedded layer before, before that. Now, just so that we know better what embedding means, basically the word indices can be converted right to input features in, in different ways. For example, we could use um, one, one hot encoding to convert these indices into vectors, basically of zeros and ones, but this would actually increase uh, the dimensionality of our feature space. Imagine like we, we can have uh, so many new features when we actually one hot encode. So we might have problems because of this uh, curse of dimensionality. And because of that, we need to use a better way, which is this embedding layer because what it does we can we can actually map each word to to a vector of a fixed size with real value elements because in contrast to one hot encoding we can use a finite sized vector to represent an infinite number of real numbers okay so basically this is the idea between embedding we're going to use um, the, the dimensionality of, of this embedding la layer is 32 and we're going to be using the input length of the max length, which is 20. So we've seen that the max length is 20. Now we can go ahead and we can compile this, um, this model. We're going to use actually an activation. Uh, the activation function will be a sigmoid function and the optimizer is Adam. So let's go ahead and compile this and we can check the summary as well. And let's fit it. We're going to fit it to the padded train set and the train labels. And we're going to just use um, a default uh, 20 epochs for that. Of course, you need to train it for more, for more than that. And the validation data is going to be the test padded set and the test labels. 